Hi everyone, welcome to Law for CLAT. Uh, this is Shirsho Ghosh. Uh, I am pursuing my LLM currently from the WBNUJS in Criminal Law Specialization. And today in this video, I will be discussing with you the complete lecture on the law of contract for CLAT UG 2024, which as you know, forms a part of the paper of legal reasoning in your paper. So before we move on to the video, some of our key attractions are here. You can learn from the students of the top NLUs and IIM if you are with us. You can have a complete uh, CLAT course from scratch. Absolutely, we'll give you our strategies. You will have mock tests, doubt clearing sessions, practice sessions on YouTube. You'll have free sectionals and you know various other mocks and study plans etc and those will be uh, free you know no paid classes will be there uh, but you can even opt for our paid one-on-one -on -one mentorship programs as it is mentioned here you know you will be getting all these uh, if you are opting for any of our paid plans and you can also go for the choose your mentor plan which is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship plan which is rupees double nine per person. Now we move on to our today's topic, which is the law of contract. And before we move on directly into law of contract, we will be seeing that, um, you know, what are some of the pointers that you are supposed to remember before, you know, going for uh, preparation for CLAT UG 2024. Now, the first thing is that there have been certain changes Okay, uh, for example, the date uh, and the paper pattern, the date, as you know, generally, uh, it used to take place on the second uh, week or on the second Sunday, rather, of December. But now it will, it has been pre to the first Sunday, that is on 3rd of December. Okay, so on 3rd of December, uh, the paper would be conducted and the paper pattern will now consist of 120 questions. Okay, previously there were 150 questions in 120 minutes, but now you have it reduced to 120 questions in 120 minutes. So you have more time to actually attempt uh, the questions. Now coming to legal reasoning and what you are, you know, supposed to focus on. Uh, see, in legal reasoning, you have to understand it is legal reasoning and not just legal. So what many people make a mistake here is that they focus too much on the theoretical part or too much into the uh, study of the depth of the legal topics. But that is not really required for CLAT UG because CLAT UG is not an exam of your knowledge, but it is an exam of your analysis. Okay. So a passage will be given to you. If you look into the past year papers, you'll get to know that a passage will be given to you. And based on this passage, one, two, three, four, around five, four, five questions or maybe six questions would be asked. Okay. So you have to read and you have to analyze this passage. And based on that, you have to attempt the questions. So you don't really, uh, you know, would be, or you won't be asked uh, as to what is this or what is that. Okay. You would be asked ki, uh, what is your interpretation from this passage? Okay, or if I change this line into something else, what would be your interpretation? So these are the questions or this is the question pattern of legal reasoning. Uh, then you might ask then what is even the purpose of reading, you know, papers like law of contract or law of torts. The focus is on how much you should study. Okay, how much to focus on. Now, we do not need to study law of contract as we will be studying on the first year of law school for the CLAT UG purpose. But we need to just have a basic introduction onto the key ideas or the key concepts of law of contract. So that when you are analyzing this passage, suppose a passage comes from the law of contract. Okay. So when you are reading or analyzing this passage, you should not be absolutely blank. You should have some preset ideas of the law of contract already in your head while you are solving this. So it will be easier for you. Okay. 
so we are saying that uh, you know it is the law of contract so first and foremost we need to understand that what is a contract okay now let us understand it this way uh, you know this is uh, something which we do on a day to day basis okay for example i tell you that there's this pen okay this pen is uh, a very beautiful pen it works really well do you want to take it okay now you might say yes i want to take it so what happened here i gave you an offer right and you said yes i want to take it so you accepted it can i say there is an offer and there is an acceptance okay now when there is an offer and there is an acceptance this is known as a promise this is known as a promise here i would request all of you to pause the video and take your uh, notebooks with you and keep noting these things okay um so you know when there is an offer and there is an acceptance it results into a promise now if i say hey, okay fine you can take this pen but you know the price of this pen is rupees 20 so if you want to take this pen you have to pay me rupees 20 so then i have added another element to that promise okay which is that rupees 20 that is the price of the pen so with this promise with this promise if i am adding the price to be paid for that promise which is known as the consideration which is known as the consideration so promise was there i want to give it to you you want to take it from me but now i'm saying you have to pay the price for it that is the consideration which is rupees 20 if i have added the consideration then promise plus the consideration becomes an agreement so an agreement is a promise along with consideration now what is the meaning of contract now going back into the meaning of contract see the indian contract act has defined what is a contract in section 2 clause h and what does it say it says um an agreement enforceable by law is a contract so it says that this agreement okay it has to be an agreement firstly but not only that this agreement has to be enforceable by law so an agreement which is enforceable by law is a contract that means an agreement cannot be an illegal agreement an agreement if it is not enforceable by law if the law cannot enforce that agreement then that agreement will not be a contract okay it will merely remain an agreement now what is this concept of enforceability by or enforceable by law that is our whole discussion the whole law of contract you can say is practically dealing with what is the understanding of this enforceable by law so if you don't understand this term enforceable by law at this very point uh, don't be worried because we will be discussing it all throughout this video so now we move on to what are the essential elements of a valid contract so if we want to enter into a valid contract you know what are those uh, essential elements which we need to focus on or which must be there in a valid contract so first thing is that an agreement has to be there meaning offer has to be there acceptance has to be there that is a makes an offer to sell his house to b okay only offer has been made does it mean contract ho gaya contract is done no here 
B has to accept this offer of purchasing the house from A. Then there will be an agreement. Okay, so this agreement is an essential uh, requirement for a valid contract because the definition of the contract only we got that contract is an agreement which is enforceable by law. Right? Second important thing is free consent. Okay. Now, what is this free consent? We'll also discuss it further. Free consent means that when A is making an offer and when B is accepting this offer, that means when the two parties, one is offering, one is accepting, they should not be forced to do it or they should not be unduly influenced to do it. Okay, or they should not be victims of any fraud so that they are induced to do it. No, their offer should be made out of free consent and their acceptance should also be made out of free consent. That free consensus is known as consensus ad idem. This consensus ad idem means meeting of minds. That means both of them have consented to the same thing. Okay, can it happen that A made an offer to sell his house which is in Delhi? Okay, and B accepted to purchase the house which is in Mumbai. Can we say that there is consensus at Edem? No, because one house is in Delhi, one house is in Mumbai. They are not offering and agreeing on the same thing, right? So, there has to be meeting of minds by pre-consent. That means that they have to agree on the same thing. Okay. Uh, we will be discussing what is free consent further. Then competence of parties. Now, this is a very important thing that, should, that you should remember and note it. So, what do we mean by competence of parties? See, to do anything, we need to be competent. Okay. For example, um, to drive, we need to be an adult. To consume alcohol, there is a certain age. Um, similarly, to enter into contract also, we all need to be major. Okay, first thing is, we all need to be major. And generally, major means 18 years. Okay, but in some cases, it is also 21 years when a person is under a guardian okay a guardian which is appointed by the court okay suppose his parents are not there a co the court has appointed a legal guardian in that case that person will be attaining majority at the age of 21 years but in general cases a person we say he becomes major he or she becomes major when they are turning 18 years so first what is the requirement for competence first thing is you have to be major second you have to be of sound mind you have to be of sound mind now what do you mean by sound mind it means that we are mentally fit we are mentally absolutely fit we are not suffering from any mental disorder or what we in a very layman's way call madness so we are not suffering from any type of insanity okay lunacy idiocy we are not suffering from those things we are absolutely mentally fit now there can happen that a person he has certain bouts of insanity. Okay, for example, if you have seen that movie, Bhul Bhulaya, okay, where the protagonist gets some bouts of insanity at some parts of the night, okay, she becomes another different person. But on the other times of the day, she is absolutely fit mentally. In such a case, what will happen? In such a case, if a person enters into a contract when he is mentally fit, then in such cases, the person will be entering into a valid contract. But if the person enters into the contract at the time when he is under insanity, under madness, then that contract will not be valid. Okay. So the second point is when entering into the contract, the person should be of sound mind. And the third thing is not disqualified by law. So law should not have disqualified you from entering into contract. You should be allowed by law to enter into contract. So first thing was what? You have to be a major. Second is you have to be of sound mind. And third thing is 
that law should not have disqualified you from entering to contracts in that if you are fulfilling these three things then you are entering into a contract okay or you are able to enter into a contract you are competent okay then we move on to the next important thing that is lawful consideration so as i said here a offered to sell his house to b b accepted it but this will not amount to a contract until and unless there is some price okay which we are calling as consideration if there is no consideration then there will not be any contract okay this is the general rule though there are certain exceptions we will be discussing that also but generally understand that for any contract you need the price to be paid if something is given to you voluntarily if something is given to you for free that generally is not a contract okay contract you have to pay the price okay even if that is rupee 1 then also the consideration has to be there okay and it has to be a lawful consideration then it has to be a lawful object also that means the purpose of the contract cannot be to do some illegal act okay both the consideration and the object have to be lawful that means if the object for example i enter into a contract with you to sell you some illegal drugs or i enter into a contract with you to sell you some uh, you know arms ak47 and all okay uh, which are not licensed you are not licensed to carry them so in such cases i am entering into a contract with you to uh do something illegal so that will not be a valid contract the consideration or the object both have to be lawful they cannot be illegal or they cannot be fraudulent or they should not defeat the purpose of law or they should not be immoral in the eyes of law okay next intention to create legal uh, relationship now this is a very interesting point let us understand um see when we are entering into contract we are entering into a sort of a legal relationship and it is not merely a relationship of friendship or love or something like that but it is a legal relationship right so let us understand a case here what happened this case is known as balfour's case or balfour versus balfour okay now what happened in this case is the husband okay went out to some different place and he had promised to give his wife some monthly allowances okay some monthly allowances because he will not be around later on he defaulted in paying these allowances okay now the wife sued the husband in court saying that he has breached the contract he agreed to pay me the allowances he is not paying me as breached the contract now the court said wait he only promised to you as your husband as a family member there was no intention to create any type of legal association or legal relationship with you he contracted only because he was your husband so there is no contract because there was no intention on part of the husband to create or bind them by any legal obligation or legal relationship so it was held not to be a valid contract okay and the last point is not expressly declared void now there are certain contracts which in the indian contract act itself are declared to be you know void okay for example if there is any contract which is in the restraint of marriage or any contract which is in the restraint of trade or legal proceedings such contracts are void okay such contracts are expressly declared void okay so any contract which is stopping marriage any contract which is stopping trade any contract which is stopping any legal proceeding such contracts are absolutely void already the indian contract act is telling us okay 
so these are the essential elements which have to be there in a valid contract if they are absent then that contract is not a valid contract okay okay now when we are making an offer we have to keep this in mind that we have to uh, keep certain rules into consideration okay whenever we are making an offer okay firstly the offer can be expressed or implied what do we mean by express express means that by words okay either it can be spoken words or it can be written words either by spoken words or by written words the offer can be made that is known as an express offer so for example as i said in the beginning of the class that do you want this pen i am saying do you want this pen this is a spoken thing so it is a express offer it is an express offer same thing i can write it down on a piece of paper that do you want this pen and i can give it to you so that will be a written offer now offer can also be an implied offer implied offer means not by words but by actions or by gestures or by some type of signs okay i am showing you that i want to make an offer for example you are walking by the road okay and there is a balloon seller going by okay and he comes before you and he is showing you a balloon okay now ordinarily a balloon seller will show you a balloon not to gift you that balloon but to offer you to purchase it clear so that is an implied offer okay that is an implied offer so he is not telling by word or he is not writing it down but he is just showing you so his actions are enough to make an offer so that is an implied offer both express and implied offers are valid offers okay then the terms must be definite and certain okay what do you mean by that definite and certain suppose i am making an offer to you that uh suppose a is making an offer to b that you can purchase my car either for rupees 1 lakh or 5 lakh so he, here the value or the consideration is not certain the terms of the offer are not fixed they are not definite either 1 lakh or 5 lakh that does not make any sense so any offer has to be very fixed has to be very definite certain that what is the offer being made what are the terms and conditions of the offer that has to be certain and fixed okay invitation to offer is not an offer a very important point again when somebody is making an invitation that you come and make an offer in that case will that be an offer in itself the answer is no okay now here let us see a very interesting case uh, which is known as the bumper holpen case or the name of the case is harvey versus pc okay now what happened in this case was that a uh wrote a telegram to b asking for uh, uh you know i'm willing to uh, showing his willingness to purchase b's house okay which was known as the bumper hall pin and a said i want to purchase this bumper hall pin house and i uh, please let me know what is the lowest price please let me know what is the lowest price who said this b a said this to b okay a wrote a telegram to b asking that i want to purchase this house and you please tell me the lowest price now b sent back a telegram just stating the lowest price that the lowest price is 900 pounds okay the lowest price is 900 pounds now a wrote back another telegram stating that i am ready to give you 900 pounds and i am purchasing this house 
now to see b had only stated the lowest price but to that a is telling now i am buying this now the question is did b actually make an offer by quoting the lowest price now a took this case to court because b had refused to sell his house okay when a wanted to purchase the house b said i am not selling it okay now a sued b in court a said that b by quoting the lowest price already made an offer but b said that no no offer was made now the court held that there was no offer okay merely stating the lowest price is an invitation to offer that see this is the lowest price now you all can come and make the offers to buy it i am only saying that this is the lowest price this is an invitation to offer and it is not actually an offer okay so what should have been the correct thing after b stated the lowest price then a should have made an offer to b that i want to purchase it will you give me for 900 pounds then b would have accepted it or maybe not but whatever is the case there was no offer here it was only an invitation to offer okay next is offer can be specific or general specific means specific means offer is made to one person okay general means offer is made to many persons at once both are valid okay one offer can be made to an individual one offer made can be made to the general public both are valid okay offer must be communicated okay um, so can it so happen that i made an offer to you and you didn't even get to know that offer but you have accepted it can it so happen no it cannot happen okay so offer has to be communicated now again here there is a very interesting case okay which is the lalman shukla case here what happened a boy went missing a boy went missing now his family members asked his family members asked the servants to go and search for him okay and after the servants were sent out the family members also announced a reward of rupees 501 okay whosoever will get this boy will get rupees 501 the servants did not know this they were sent beforehand only now what happens the servant actually went to uh, if i am not wrong it was haridwar when the servants went to haridwar and they actually found this boy and they brought it back now later on the family member refused to give this reward to the servants because later on the servants got to know that they had announced an award so family members refused to give this to the servants now the servants sued them in court what did the court say the court said that the servants did not even know that an offer was made at the time of doing the act so they did not know an offer was made so how can they have accepted it so there was again no contract in this case because the offer was not communicated clear and the final point that is two identical cross offers do not make a contract as i was saying let's suppose a offers to sell his house to b and b offers to uh, pay rupees let's say 20 lakh b has mentioned nothing about the house a has mentioned nothing about 20 lakhs these are two different offers but they are still offers this is an offer this is an offer okay two offers will not make a contract there has to be acceptance to make a contract okay so these were the rules of offer
okay so now uh, we come to the rules of acceptance okay so as there were legal rules of offer there are also legal rules of acceptance firstly as we saw for offer same for acceptance the acceptance can be expressed that is by words or implied that is through actions um, acceptance must be given only by the person to whom offer is made that means if a makes an offer to b if a makes an offer to b c cannot accept that offer c cannot accept that offer okay acceptance must be absolute and unqualified what is absolute absolute means that there should not be uh, ifs and buts that means it should be final okay and unqualified unqualified means unconditional that means suppose a makes an offer to sell his car to b and b says that i will accept it if you marry my daughter okay so this is not an acceptance this is a cross offer am i clear this since he has added a clause over here or a condition over here this will not be an acceptance this will be a cross offer because this is another offer now again a has to accept it or a has to accept it then that will become an agreement or an acceptance okay so acceptance should be unconditional it's if it's a yes it is absolutely yes no conditions okay acceptance must be communicated same thing like offer acceptance has to be communicated without communication acceptance cannot be final acceptance must be made within reasonable time and before offer lapses or is revoked suppose an offer is made in 2020 and to b and b accepts it in 2023 okay now there is a 3 year delay this cannot be said to be a reasonable time your offer must be accepted within a reasonable time okay or suppose the offer while it is being made the offerer says that within one month you have to accept it okay that means after one month the offer lapses that means the offer comes to an end clear so if the acceptance is made after that one month then that will not be a valid acceptance clear then acceptance must succeed the offer okay you cannot accept an offer even before the offer is made acceptance must come after the offer okay so these are the rules of acceptance okay now we move on to the next topic that is free consent so as we were discussing while the essential elements of a valid contract we had seen that free consent that means there has to be free consent of the offerer also and free consent of uh, consent of the acceptor also and it means that these five things should not be there these five things should not be there okay first is coercion what is coercion coercion means force okay that is at gun point i am asking you to accept my offer will that be free consent no because i am forcing you i am forcing you to do something or let's say uh, i am uh, asking you that if you don't accept my offer i will kill you or i will kill your family or i will cause some grave harm to your property okay that is a force you cannot force somebody to come to an or to enter into an agreement with you okay so if there is coercion that will be avoidable contract in all these cases this will result in avoidable contract what is avoidable contract i am coming to that uh, next point is undue influence undue influence means that suppose some person is in a position to influence the decision of the other okay suppose a 
is the boss and under a x y and z are working they are the employees now here a has a, a chance to influence the decision of x y and z okay because they are working for a right so a if there is any undue influence or any unduly a has tried to manipulate the decisions of x y and z to enter into a contract then that contract will be a voidable contract okay remember voidable not void third is fraud okay now fraud and misrepresentation people always confuse between these two things let me explain it to you with a very simple example two cases okay in the first case a offered to b to sell his horse a has a horse b offer uh, a offered to sell his horse to b okay and a told that this horse is absolutely a fit horse okay but a actually knows a actually knows that this horse is a mad horse that this horse is a mad horse still he says that no no this horse is a fit horse you please take it b accepts it he accepts it and purchases it okay so here a has actively hidden some facts a has actively concealed some facts because a knowingly he knows that the horse is mad still he has sold it to be saying that it is fit so he has actively hidden some facts this is known as fraud so fraud means active concealment of certain facts clear to enter into a contract second case same thing a offered to sell his horse to b and a said that this horse is fit but what happens in this case is a did not know or a has no idea a has no idea that his horse is mad a knows that the horse is fit a believes that the horse is absolutely fit but still uh, the horse in reality is mad which a does not know a offered it uh, to b and b accepted it later b found out that the horse was mad now what did a do did a do fraud no because a has not actively hidden the fact he himself did not know but a did misrepresentation because he showed something a uh, misrepresentation he showed something which is not in reality okay so fraud is the active concealment of the facts and misrepresentation you can say is the passive concealment of facts lastly mistake now mistake if there is any mistake then uh, you know that contract will be void then that contract will be void okay so if uh, as i was giving an example before that a offered b to sell a house in delhi b thought that a was trying to sell him the house in mumbai b thought so there was a mistake okay and b accepted it okay so this will not be a valid contract okay this will not be a valid contract because there is a mistake okay okay moving on the next thing that we will be doing is consideration okay consideration was the price paid for the promise okay so if i am offering you uh, a certain commodity and i am asking for a price of that commodity from you that price is the consideration for the contract okay if there is no consideration there will be no contract that means even if it is rupee 1 then also that consideration is required okay that is told in section 25 of the contract if you don't really need to remember the sections but i have just mentioned you if you can remember great now generally for a contract there has to be consideration okay if there is 
free if it, if it is free if it is voluntary then it is not a contract it is a gift but there are certain cases when that free thing or without any consideration agreement can also be a contract okay when something is given out of natural love and affection okay suppose father gives his son and daughters a uh, certain property out of natural love and affection okay then promise to compensate for voluntary services okay so previously somebody had done certain voluntary services and now a person agrees to compensate for those services which had been given okay uh, then promise to pay time barred debt when certain debt okay certain previous loan becomes time barred means it cannot be now recovered okay it cannot be now recovered okay and a promise to pay off that debt okay that again without any consideration it can be so uh, these are certain things which you don't really need to go into much details just you have to remember this cardinal rule that no consideration no contract and there are certain exceptions to it okay okay the next thing is void agreements we'll also be discussing with it what is voidable void and voidable okay two things we have to see uh so void means something which is or, or rather when we say void agreement it is something which is void ab initio meaning from the very beginning it has been void that means it was never valid it was never existing or it was never valid in the eyes of law it has always been void okay what are those type of contracts agreement in restraint of marriage as i said any agreement to stop the marriage okay any agreement in restraint of trade to stop some trade any agreement in restraint of any legal proceeding okay any uncertain agreement the agreement whose terms and conditions are not clear wagering agreement wagering agreement means that some agreement which promises to do something if a future uncertain event happens or does not happen that means i tell you that i will give my house to you if it rains tomorrow okay i will give my house to you if it rains tomorrow this is a wagering agreement okay or a wager okay which is like a bet okay it's like a betting so such type of wagering agreement is not allowed or it's it's void actually okay agreement contingent on impossible events or to do impossible act suppose i tell you that uh, i will give you my house if you go and land in the sun nobody can go and land in the sun okay so that is an impossible act so an agreement to do an impossible act is again void these agreements are all all these agreements are void ab initio that means from the very beginning from their very inception they have been void but there are certain agreements which are voidable voidable agreements what is voidable voidable means it can be made either valid or it can be made void and the option is on one party at the option of one party which party the party who is affected the party who is affected what does that mean see when i told you which type of uh, contracts will be voidable if somebody has entered into through coercion through undue influence through fraud etc right these things misrepresentation so basically suppose i have coerced you i have forced you to enter into a contract with me okay so you are the affected party you are the effect you have been affected of coercion right so now you have the option you can either say that i choose to make this contract valid that means you choose to follow that contract so that will become valid or you can say that i choose to avoid this contract that means that contract will become void so it means what it is an or it is in your hands it is in your option whose option the affected party since you have been affected of coercion so now the law is telling you that you have the option now 
you can either choose to follow the contract making it valid or you can choose to avoid the contract it will become void so this is the concept of voidable always remember voidable means at the option of the affected party there is the contract can either become a valid one or a void one but in case of void agreements it is absolutely void there is no option okay so that was all for today uh, i hope you enjoyed this session uh, if you have any doubts you can reach out to us uh, through uh, you know the number which is given okay uh, our website is also mentioned over here you can reach out to us through there and uh, i hope you liked it so i hope you also uh, will try out our courses which are being offered by lawfer and i wish you all the very best for your upcoming examinations thank you this is shirsha ghosh signing off